not sure how to really define my passion here, but I consider myself a DIY arcade enthusiast, and I want an immersive arcade experience at home. And I don't feel that keyboards belong on arcade cabs, unless of course you're playing Typing of the Dead. And this is why your arcade cab needs a Stream Deck. I'm gonna show you how I use it, how I set it up, and for those of you that are skeptical, I'm gonna show you some really cool RetroArch features that you might not be aware of. The Stream Deck makes navigating that stuff really simple. Sure, some of these features can be mapped to some elaborate button combinations. And yeah, Stream Decks are expensive, but so are chiropractors. Okay, so question. Do you think these logo intros are dead? I feel that they are. Should we just skip all the formalities and just get into the content? Let me know in the comments. So moving on to our arcade cab. You can see I have a little bit of a mock-up of it on my right. Just below me is a camera that's focused on the Stream Deck so you can see how that's working. Now notice you can see this blue halo here and this kind of funky housing that it's in. So if you check out this video up here, you can see how I took the card reader that my arcade cab came with. It was something like a, like a Dave and Buster's kind of card reader. And I ended up gutting it to put the Stream Deck inside it because I thought it looked really cool. So we are in Windows running LaunchBox with Big Box here. And we can browse games with the buttons and sticks. And with the Stream Deck here, I can do things like adding additional access to some of the things that Big Box can do. So for example, we can view retro achievements so we browse to the game and I can pull up the retro achievements right here and see where my progress is and some of the other fun things that you can do. We can do things like search. It pulls up an on-screen keyboard here and I can still use the buttons and sticks to navigate the keyboard to search for games. I like having a dedicated launch button here because that way if I have friends over and they don't really know how to use the buttons and sticks to navigate, it's very clear. Hit that to launch the game. So I have a subfolder here we have our most commonly used things on the first page to keep it nice and clean and simple. But sometimes I'd like to do some other adjustments so I can hit the subfolder that goes a little further into the profile and we can do things like switch the theme. I can hit this button so if I feel like mixing it up, changing the view, I can pull up the theme browser right here. I can also just switch views. A lot of these themes have different views that are available to you depending on what you want to do, how you want to browse the games and how you want it to look. We also have one of my favorite things that you can do with this is I have the wheel spin feature. So I can hold this button down and it will just randomly spin until I let go. I have a shortcut mapped here. So if I need to, I can just quick exit out to Windows if I need to make some changes. So I'm going to use this to directly launch the game. And you will see how the Stream Deck will automatically, using the Smart Profile feature, will switch to the RetroArch profile. Now that it's in the RetroArch profile, I have quick access to some of the RetroArch features that I use all the time. Things like pause, coin. If I want to put coins in, I do have a regular coin mech on this machine, but sometimes I just don't want to deal with that. So I can just put coins in using that or use the coin mech depending on what's going on. We also have the ability to save the game. We can exit the emulator. Since I have a regular coin mech here mapped to my select button, I don't really have the ability to hit start and select at the same time to exit the emulator. So I have a dedicated exit button mapped right here. Also, we can get into the RetroArch menu using this. I don't like having a button combination on the control panel for going into the menu because sometimes you start mashing buttons and getting crazy and you can accidentally kick into the menu and change some things. The run ahead feature is really awesome in RetroArch, but the problem is, is you need to set it up on a per game basis. So. Well, let me get rid of these guys so we can actually do something here. So you have to go in, pause the game. So we need to calculate how many frames of input latency we have. And you have to do this on a per game basis. So I'm going to hold down the punch button. And you can see here we have a shortcut mapped to run ahead forward one frame. Typically, that's mapped to the letter key on your keyboard. And again, this gives me quick access to this feature. So I can hold down the punch button and I can step forward one, two, three, four. So now the animation starts. So we have three frames of input lag before the punch starts. 
And then we just go into the menu here, which I've put an additional button just because I'm already here. It's a quality of life thing. And I can go into my latency, go into my run ahead, turn it on, and I'm going to run ahead for three frames. We can unpause, and now we've pretty much eliminated, and we can verify, we've pretty much eliminated all the input lag. So I'm going to hold down punch again, and I'm going to step forward one frame, and you see the punch already starts. We've now gotten it down to one frame of input latency. Very quickly, just using the Stream Deck, not having to pull out a keyboard and deal with all of that. Really, really convenient, and you can do this quickly whenever you're playing, make those quick adjustments and keep on having fun. I also like having a dedicated exit button mapped here because on more than one occasion, I've been mashing buttons and accidentally just exit out in the middle of a game. So another really convenient feature of RetroArch is the AI translation. So we're playing this game here. As far as I know, it does not have a fan translation available to it. And we can just hit this button here and it will pause the game, send a screenshot to the translator and overlay it the translation over the game. So now I can play games that don't have fan translations and at least get through the menu systems of other games. It opens up a lot of possibilities and makes these games more playable and to have quick access to it like this on the fly is a really huge thing. Some emulators, in the case of Daphne here, they do not accept two button inputs, two button presses simultaneously. So for example, using select and start to exit the emulator, it needs to be dedicated to a single button. So I have that mapped to the Stream Deck here as well. That way it's not on my control panel where I can accidentally hit the wrong button and kick out of the emulator. You can do all kinds of other neat things with it while you're playing games at your cab. You can use it to control smart lighting, listen to Spotify. I can even use it to monitor my YouTube stats in real time so I can get motivated to make even more videos. All right, so here's the skinny on how to set this thing up. First thing you, you, I highly recommend that you do, and check out here, they have a app store inside the new software. Spend some time here, dig around, look at all these plugins. Check out the plugins by Bar Raider, a lot of handy tools like Windows tools, the launcher utility, the macro features, a lot of really, really good stuff here. So make sure you spend some time digging through this stuff and experiment with that. They also have these really cool icon sets that you can download. These all seem to be free and very convenient to just download them right inside the Stream Deck application instead of having to import them separately. We're going to make a new profile. And it's going to give us this empty with the welcome screen. You can just delete that. If I can get to it, there it is. Delete. These are all the plugins that I have installed. Some of them come standard. We go over here to system, roll that down, and you can see we have some buttons that we can use. So what we're mostly going to use is this one right here is the hotkey, not the hotkey switch, but just the hotkey. And all you need to do is just drag it to a button and boom. Now we have a button that's ready to be assigned to something. Now what's really cool and really handy is just go to the wiki of the emulator or whatever software. So in this case, we're going to look at the RetroArch wiki and you can see here all the keyboard commands. They also have controllers, but we're going to stick with the keyboard commands. Anything here, we can map to a button. You can see all the references to all the different functions that are in RetroArch. So we're going to take a look at pause, for example. So letter P on the keyboard is our pause button. So we'll go here. Here's our hotkey button that we added. Select that. And it says right here, click to assign. So when we click that, it's listening till we push something. So I'm going to push letter P on the keyboard. And now it's mapped to that. So now when we press this button on our stream deck, it's going to input the letter P on the keyboard, which will pause the game. So we'll go in here. We'll give it a name. Pause. Then what we can do here is we can customize the icon click that little carrot and we can set from file, which means if we find a file online or a cool custom graphic that we want to use, we can import that. We can create a new icon, or we can use something from the Stream Deck icon library, which is really handy. And that's why it's nice to go through and download some of those because now we have them all right in here. 
and a lot of them are basically already pre-built for most common situations. But a lot of these icon packs, so for this one example, the neon grid, which I like, I like that kind of 80s look. They have a couple empty ones that we can make do anything, and you can see it's a GIF here. So if I pick this one, it's actually animated, which is really cool. So now you can see we have this animated 80s grid pattern here on our button. And whatever you type in here is what's going to show up on the button. And that's really handy so you can customize it for anything that you're doing. If you click the T icon for text, we can orient the text at the bottom, middle, or at the top. And we can pick fonts. We can change the font size here. We can change the color. Fully customizable, very intuitive, very easy to deal with. The one exception in this is certain keys like page up, page down, and some numerical pad inputs. If the Stream Deck software is not running as an administrator, some of those key presses don't work. I believe it's a Windows security issue. Windows will not allow hotkeys unless they come from the actual keyboard. Unless, of course, you're running Stream Deck as an administrator. So if you run into stuff like that, you may have to customize in RetroArch and change the input to something else that is working. So just be aware that if you put a custom keybind in your Stream Deck and it works when you push it on the keyboard, but it doesn't work when you push it on the Stream Deck, it is a good indication that it may be a security issue that because the Stream Deck software is not running as administrator. Now you can run the Stream Deck software as an administrator, however, it, I have yet to find a way to have it start up as running as administrator. It would be a nice feature if they could figure that out. If I do run into situations like that, I will change the RetroArch setting to a different key command in order to compensate for that. Another pro tip is if I am changing key commands in RetroArch or LaunchBox, BigBox, whatever software, if I'm customizing to different keybinds, I highly recommend just keep a notepad file. Keep track of all these changes and all these custom key commands you're mapping to things just in case you run into an issue later on and you can't figure out why. If you don't like any of the icons that are available in the Stream Deck software, you can actually go to Create New Icon. It will take you to the Stream Deck Creator here. Very powerful, it runs right in the browser, super easy and intuitive to work through. They have an even bigger library of custom icons that are that have transparent backgrounds, so that way you can put in a different file. You can import pictures that you find on the internet. You can import all kinds of different things. And a really cool feature is the wallpaper mode. We pick which Stream Deck we have. The XL, the Stream Deck Mini, in our case we're using a Mini. And it will show basically the wallpaper image, so it'll be the same image combined across all the keys, which is really cool. And then it will kick out a file of all those individual graphics, but they, when they're laid out on the Stream Deck software, it makes a complete image, which is a really cool feature. Another really cool thing that you should be aware of is that you have function keys on your keyboard that go all the way up to F12. But Windows actually has an additional, like 12 other function keys that you can pull from. It goes all the way up to function 24. Now these are not on your traditional keyboard, but they are here available to you. And what's really nice is you can use some of these additional function keys so that way you're not tying up or causing any other conflicts with shortcuts that may conflict with another software that you're running. So I can pick, say, F20 as our keybind for pause. Now what we will need to do is go into RetroArch and remap it to F20 instead of the letter P on the keyboard. And the easiest way to do that is to first map it to your Stream Deck then go into RetroArch, and when it's listening for the key binding, hit that button on the Stream Deck. Then it's mapped to F20, and that eliminates any of those potential conflicts that you might run into with other keys being used in other things. For convenience, I also like to have keys mapped to things like starting LaunchBox or BigBox. I highly recommend Bar Raiders Advanced Launcher. So this is an application launcher, and here is the button for that. You have the Advanced Launcher, uh, Process Killer, Steam Game Launcher. If you wanted to actually map individual games to different keys, you can do that. But we're just going to use the Advanced Launcher. Drag this over. And then basically all you have to do is point 
to the exe file of whatever thing you want to launch with that button. And you have some other um, conditions here. So you can say, start minimize, run as administrator, things like that. Now, in order to run as administrator, I believe the Stream Deck software needs to also be running as administrator. Kill instances. So for example, if you accidentally hit a button and that software is always already running, you can use this to prevent it from opening two instances of the same application. Very powerful, very handy, and a big thank you to Bar Raider for this feature. So in our case, we're going to use this button to actually launch Big Box. We go to choose file, and we're going to go to our launch box. Big Box executable, point to that, I'm going to say open. And now it's mapped and it even pulls the icon of the exe file which you can change after the fact if you wish so now you can see when we push this button it's going to launch us into big box which is really convenient the really handy thing with big box is you can go into the big box settings we can scroll down here to options and in options we're going to scroll down to keyboard mappings Anything in here, we can also map to a hotkey. So any, this is some, mostly this is the defaults in big box here, but any of this can be custom mapped as well. So for example, view game achievements, have that mapped to the letter A. Exit, I have mapped to the letter X on the keyboard. Increase volume, switch view. This is where it gets really handy. So we, I mapped the letter V to the switch view so that when I'm browsing games on the fly, I can change the views in the big box and not have to go all the way to the menu and change all that. I can just do it quickly on the fly. Anything in here, we can also custom map to something. So I'm going to go down to spin wheel while pressed. So this was custom mapped to the letter W on my keyboard. And this is kind of fun. And then we can go back to our, we can just alt tab over to our Stream Deck software. Going to go to System, Hotkey. We're gonna drag a new hotkey. And we're gonna assign that to the letter W. Now we have this button mapped to the wheel spin. Then when we Alt-Tab back over to Big Box, get out of here. When I hold this button down, the wheel's gonna spin until I release. Now that you have your Stream Deck built the way you like it, or say this profile here. The other thing we can do is go to settings, profiles, and we can name our profiles here. Right click, you can rename it. I'm gonna call it all this tutorial. Here is where you can map it to an application. Now it's gonna first pull from all the applications that are currently open. So the easiest way is to basically just open the application that you want to map this to, alt tab back to the Stream Deck software, and pull from whatever applications that are running. And you can point to the exe file. Whenever that exe file is running, it's going to automatically map to that profile and switch between them, which is where the power really comes in using a Stream Deck in this way. So if you're running out of space on your Stream Deck and you want more stuff, so basically I have my most commonly used things on the first page, but if we wanted to have additional stuff that we may need access to, we can go to where it says here, Stream Deck, and we can add a subfolder. We drag that over, and now we have a subfolder that we can go to, we double click that, and now we have additional things we can map to. And then we have a back button, we can push that, and we can go back to the first page, and if we click the folder, we go to the next page over. And we can add even more folders if we want to. If we need to have more places to go to and additional features we want to add, I'm not sure what the maximum subfolders are, but it might get a little crazy having to keep going back all the way through here. But you have room for expansion. So another thing I like to do is in the case of a game like Fight and Rage where I don't need any button mappings. So I have it just pull up a wallpaper graphic just because it looks cool. We have the technology and it's fun to just give it that extra slick custom look. For some more advanced things you can do, you can use a multi-action button. 
And basically what this is, is multi-action. We add this button and now we can drag multiple, anything in here we can drag into a multi-action. So we could do something like when we boot up the arcade, have it turn turn the lights on to a, say to a particular scene. Maybe we have a smart lighting scene that we like for our arcade. So you can customize the scene and then have it do 50 second delay and then have it open an application and then have it queue a Spotify playlist. Like it's literally any of these things can be dropped into here. So you can have a whole complicated system of actions all mapped to one button. And lastly, I want to touch on, there are some really advanced features here from Bar Raider with their super macro. Now what this can do is a very elaborate sequence of key presses and delays, you can even move the mouse to a certain X, Y position and left click or right click or tab over through menus and all kinds of things. It can get pretty involving, but I wanted to mention this. Once you have everything set up the way you like it, just don't forget, go back into your settings. And if you right click on a profile, you can export and back them up. It's always a good idea. I hope this has given you some ideas. As a community, it's important that we share in our passions, play, have fun, and make it your own. If you want to see more, check out my Twitch channel. I'll be having fun on this cab and my VPIN cab. Thanks for watching. Yo, Sin Shop, Mighty Pong, how are you all? Welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> I'm glad that worked. One Thank of you. Us, <laughs> one of us. One of us. One of us. One it's of all us. working at least. This. <laughs> oh, there we go. Good thing they coded a ball search in here. It's just like the real thing. Woo!